Good morning. Catholics from around Minnesota and the region morning to pay a final farewell to the leader of the Catholic Diocese of Duluth. In just a few moments from now, the funeral mass for the late bishop will take place here at the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Rosary. Almighty Lord, for Bishop Paul David Serba has been preaching the teachings of the Catholic Duluth Diocese, a large diocese covering the entire Arrowhead region with six the Lord be with you. Serba grew up in Minneapolis, attended St. Paul's priest in 1986. Pope Benedict appointed Serba for the Diocese of Duluth in 2009. Two years after being with him in 2011 on WDSE TV's Almanac North plan for the diocese. Our goal is transparenting happens at the local level as as much as as possible. Bishop dedicating himself to healing the church amid historic changes in demographics of parishioners and a shortage of pre on Bishop Serva's life. Serving the diocese for more than three decades, Casket will be accompanied by his nephews. Archbishop Bernard Hebda of the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis will be today's celebrant. And Bishop Serba's brother, Father Joseph Serba, will deliver today's homily. We now bring you live coverage of the funeral mass of Bishop Paul Serba.
eternal glory. join in singing our opening hymn at the Lamb's High Feast.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that the soul of your departed servant, Bishop Paul Serba, to whom you committed the care of your family, may with the manifold fruit of his labors enter into the eternal gladness of his Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before men indeed they be punished, Yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed in an instant, in the blink of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. For that which is corruptible must close itself with incorruptibility, and that which is mortal must clothe itself with immortality. And when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, then this which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life will lose it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. 
I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Or say a few words, I just wanted to mention one thing, that there's going to be a memorial mass for Bishop Paul Serba at Maternity of Mary Parish in St. Paul, where he served as a pastor, <clears throat> excuse me, and that will be this coming Monday at 6.30. So please pass the word to people in the cities uh, who may be interested in attending. Archbishop Hebda, most reverend bishops, my brother, priests, deacons, religious sisters, members of the various ecclesial communities present, and my brothers and sisters in Christ. On behalf of my brother John, and my sister Kathy, and my mother Helen, we want to thank all of you for your outpouring of love and support to us at this time of loss, and also for the honor that you have paid to our brother by your presence here today. It means a great deal to us all. I know that all of us here were stunned to learn that Bishop Paul had died this past Sunday. And in fact, many of you have told me that when you learned of his death, you said there must be some mistake. It must be someone else who had died. And others have told me that they heard what was said, but that the words didn't register. My brother was on his way to celebrate the 8 a.m. Mass at St. Rose and Proctor when he died. He had just left the rectory and was about to cross the parking lot when he collapsed. And the guys who were plowing saw him and rushed over to do CPR. And an ambulance was on the scene in less than 10 minutes. Bishop Paul was rushed to the hospital and the medical staff did all they could, but they were never able to get his heart beating again. It's very likely that he was dead the moment he collapsed. In the midst of the snowstorm, Father John Petrich was able to get to the hospital via police cruiser and to administer the sacraments. And I want to thank both Father John and our wonderful police officers for that. They really do protect and serve. Most of you don't know that our bishop did have a heart problem. My sister, who has been a nurse for many years, told me that when what it was called is a third degree heart block. And if you want to find out more about that, you can ask her. <laughs> Five or six years ago, the bishop had a pacemaker installed to help correct this, but obviously he could only do so much. My brother loved the Lord very much. Jesus Christ was the center of his life. In his private chapel, which I spent a little bit of time in a couple of days ago, he had three books currently that he was reading. One was the Holy Bible. Another was called Encino Jesu, a book by a Benedictine monk subtitled the Journal of a Priest at Prayer. And also he had volume two of the letters of St. Teresa of Jesus. I presume he probably had already finished volume one. And along with his books, I found his personal journal. And it contained some notes about what he had read, as well as some of his own personal meditations. Here are just a few of his entries. Jesus said, tend the flock, feed my sheep. Father, all things are possible in you. We are called to be another paraclete, like another Christ, so that we can console. Bishop Paul was a humble man. He never had any desire for accolades. He was not ambitious in the bad sense of the word. And he certainly never aspired to be a bishop. In fact, some of you may recall that when the papal nuncio, Archbishop Pietro Sambi, called him, and said that Pope Benedict had chosen him to be the new Bishop of Duluth, 
He first replied, you don't mean my brother, do you? <laughs> to which Archbishop Sambi replied, we are aware that he is there. <laughs> And I'm still wondering what the Archbishop meant by that. <laughs> Bishop Paul, above all else, had a desire to share Christ's love. He was a Catholic through and through. He was raised in a home by loving parents who shared with him their love for God through their example, encouragement, prayers, guidance, and sacrifice. There were no compromises either in belief or practice. There were no deviations from what Christ taught through his church. And Bishop Paul embraced that faith. However, that is not to say that he did so blindly. Quite the contrary. He had a very good mind. He was second in his class at Holy Angels Academy in Richfield, where he went to high school. And he was trained by the best at St. Thomas College. Monsignor Henri Dulac, Father James Strongberg, Dr. Richard Cannell, Father George Wellsbacher, Father James Reedy, Dr. Thomas Sullivan, taught him how to think correctly and to anal analyze arguments on his own. Those of us who are graduates of St. Thomas or were graduates in those days received a great gift from these great teachers. And I know it pains us all so much to see how far St. Paul, St. Thomas has fallen these days. Another great priest from St. Thomas who was instrumental in Bishop Paul's formation was and is Father Roy Lepec who has been a spiritual director to many priests here in Minnesota and has guided many of us who are here today as we have sought to grow in our union with God. This Aristotelian Thomistic foundation Bishop Paul received built on his Catholic upbringing and coupled with his desire to serve God and grow in God's love allowed him to be an excellent spiritual director at both St. John Vianney Seminary and St. Paul Seminary as well as a much beloved pastor at Maternity of Mary Parish in St. Paul. I know that all the priests of our diocese were overlearned, overjoyed to learn that Father Paul had been appointed pastor and shepherd of our diocese. As a former pastor of a parish, we knew that with his pastoral experience, he was never going to send us new directives to read or forms to fill out during Holy Week. <laughs> we also knew that he would understand both the joys and the sorrows that come from being a parish priest. And for that, I know that we are all grateful. I had a unique relationship with my brother, the bishop, because my bishop was my brother. We had our own little joke when we talked on the phone. Often, instead of using our first names as we had done all of our lives, if I called him, I would say, hello, Bishop Serba, this is Father Serba. <laughs> or he would call me and say, Father Serba, how are you? I know that there are more than a few priests who have brothers who are bishops, but as far as we knew, we were the only two who served in the same diocese. Of course, I always reminded him that I was here first. <laughs> My vantage point as his brother did allow me to understand in some ways the life of a bishop. At least I got a glimpse of it. I deliberately stayed away from discussing diocesan business with him and he also with me. Instead, we talked about our family, history, politics, and other subjects of mutual interest. However, his role was different than mine. He was a successor of the apostles. He was a visible sign we Catholics have that apostolic succession, which goes back to St. Peter himself. He was what made our one holy Catholic and apostolic church here in our diocese apostolic. And that, in fact, is what every Catholic bishop is. That is a beautiful gift of God to us. Another thing is this, every bishop has the fullness of the priesthood. I used to joke when others were around that once he had been ordained a bishop, I was the only one who had persevered in my vocation. <laughs> However, the reality was that it was he, through the grace of holy orders, that had received the fullness of the priesthood. As bishop, he was a complete priest. Father Jean Galot, in his book, Theology of the Priesthood, speaks about how the priest shares in the threefold ministry of Christ as priest, 
prophet, and king. But he also goes on to say that above all else, the priest is alter Christus in this sense, that he's a pastor. And that, of course, is the Latin word for shepherd. And Bishop Paul was that. And in fact, all bishops are shepherds. They are the chief shepherds of their flocks. As Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. And Bishop Paul knew his sheep. To be a bishop is a difficult thing that I saw. Do you ever stop to think that the task of a bishop is to do the very best he can to see that everyone in his diocese gets to heaven? And I mean everyone, Catholics and non-Catholics alike. To any bishop who takes his vocation seriously, that in fact is a daunting task and one that they could only succeed at with the help of God. And that is why all of us need to pray and sacrifice for our bishops every day. Bishop Paul was a shepherd. He was a good shepherd, and there were a number of ways that that was apparent. First, he was a father to his priests, and sometimes that requires a great deal of love and patience. If you think being a father to your children is hard, that's nothing compared to being a father to your priest. <laughs> There's a Latin saying, sui generis, it means of his own kind. And sui generis is really just a fancy way of saying we're all unique. That's certainly true for us priests. Our presbyterate knows me well, and they'll appreciate this comment made by our bishop. Occasionally, when someone would tell them, him something about me, he would pause for a moment, and he would say, yep, that's my brother. <laughs> but in fact, we priests all want and need a spiritual father. Just like any son, we desire our father's approval. And we want to know that what we are doing is pleasing to him. We want his guidance, and we seek his support. And we want to be one with him in building up the church. I would even say this, we want to be corrected when necessary. This special relationship only breaks down when a bishop himself falters, or speaks with a discordant voice, or is unkind. As the scriptures say, if the trumpet sounds and the clear call is not clear, who will get ready for battle? Bishop Poe was also a pastor and a shepherd to his flock. Many people have commented on his kindness and gentleness. Sometimes when you are too close to another person, you don't see the things others do until they're pointed out to you. When he met people, he could, they could tell that he cared about them. They were attracted to him because they could see in him the love of Christ. He was a channel of God's grace. Those who were hurting were consoled because they knew he hurt with them. And those who were rejoicing knew that he was rejoicing with them. When people met him, they felt accepted. To them, he wasn't just Bishop Paul. He was my friend, Bishop Paul. And if they were not necessarily living rightly, after they met him, they were inspired to strive to live like him. Bishop Paul was also a leader. He knew it was his job to hand on the faith, to hand on what he had received. He was not going to wrap his talent up and bury it in the ground. Rather, he was resolved to make five and ten more with it. And to that end, he never compromised with the faith. And he taught what the church teaches, not only because he was a bishop, but also because he believed it. As Father Mike Schmidt said, he was so much like Jesus, gentle with people and uncompromising with the truth, a true shepherd and father. One thing that we discussed often was the decline of Christianity in the Western world. Bishop Paul foresaw, and I believe he was right, and time will tell, we shall see, that a harsh persecution is coming soon. And there are many signs this may be upon us. And that is why we need to pray even more for our bishops. They're often under great pressure to give in to the demands of the world. And history has shown that time and again, in times of great turmoil, many have done just that. So we must pray hard for our bishops, and we must let our bishops know how much we need them and how much we appreciate their care and concern for us, and the fact that they love us enough to speak the truth to us even when we don't want to hear it. Bishops are human as are we all. They have hearts that break, they have trials they endure, and temptations they must fight. And in the times to come, we must pray that they be great leaders. They do not conform to the demands of the world. No one remembers the bishops of England who, during the reign of Henry VIII, swore the oath of supremacy, which effectively meant they were renouncing and rejecting the spiritual authority of the Pope as head of the church and successor of St. Peter. 
But we all remember St. John Fisher, the Bishop of Rochester and chaplain to the king's own mother who refused the oath and was ordered beheaded by a vindictive king. It is bishops like St. John Fisher and St. Charles Borromeo and more recently Cardinal Joseph Manzetti and blessed Cardinal Clemens August von Galen who defied the Nazis, who are remembered and who are loved by their people for being fearless shepherds who are willing to protect their flocks even with their very lives. It's going to be hard to say goodbye for now, yet our readings today, in them I found inspiration and comfort. St. Paul says to us, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all fall asleep, but we shall all be changed in an instant, in the blink of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. He goes on to say, Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Book of Wisdom also reminds us that the souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment will touch them. Chastised a little, they should be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. And finally, Jesus reminds us that unless the grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Our Lord goes on to say, whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. I recently read St. John Paul's book, Rise, Let Us Be on Our Way. He wrote the book on the 45th anniversary of his ordination as bishop in 2003. And he wrote it to and four bishops. In it, he tells us of his experience as a bishop and how he found joy in his vocation. Bishop Paul had an inner joy that you could feel, and his love of God was attractive. I think he was inspired by, in his ministry by these great bishops I've just mentioned, and especially by Pope John Paul, who was so much an inspiration for his priesthood and for many priests of my generation. Pope John Paul began his pontificate by telling us and the whole world, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to follow Christ wherever he might lead you. Near the end of his pontificate, he again quoted Jesus, arise, let us be on our way. Bishop Paul was about that very thing. He was on his way. These last few years were very difficult ones for him. And yet there was a serenity about him. He trusted in God and he placed all that he did in God's hands. But first, by giving what he did to our Blessed Lady, whom he loved very much. He was on his way. In our Lord's providence, once this task of the last few years was completed, God saw fit to call Bishop, home, Bishop Paul from this life to his eternal home. Bishop Peter Christensen, his very dear friend, said to me, I am jealous. And he meant jealous because Bishop Paul's work here on earth was done and his was not. And in that sense, we should all be jealous too because we are still at work. We are on the way. So then, let us continue on the way. Let us rise and all be on our way, each one of us following Christ, the good shepherd, until he sees fit to call us home as well. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. Let the perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May the souls and his soul and the souls of all the faithfully parted through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. In baptism, Bishop Paul received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. 
Our brother Paul was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Our brother Bishop Paul shared in the priesthood of Jesus Christ, leading God's people in prayer and worship. Bring him into your presence, where he will take his place in the heavenly liturgy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The family and friends of Bishop Paul seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother, Bishop Paul. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We humbly beseech your boundless mercy and more at this sacrifice which your departed servant and bishop oh, while in the body offered to your majesty for the salvation of the faithful, may now bring him to your pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. up your hearts. We live Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has done, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, Life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hopes and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. By the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim God the Lord, profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Bishop Paul, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <laughs> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ.
heaven, Lord, O oh Lord. Benefit the soul of your departed servant, Bishop Paul, that by these sacrificial gifts he may know the eternal company of Christ, in whom he hoped and whom he preached, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. As diocesan administrator, on behalf of the clergy and the faithful of the Diocese of Duluth, I wish to thank all of those who took part in our funeral rites these last few days. And I wish to thank in a special way Archbishop Hebda and your brother bishops who are with us today. You honor us with your presence. I also wish to extend once again, our heartfelt condolences to Bishop Serba's mother and family at the time of his passing. Like you, he loved us and we loved him. Following our prayers in church, we will take the bishop's body to our Calvary Cemetery and we will pray there for him. As we bury our beloved bishop, it will be our singular honor to have him with us here where we can pray for him and care for him until that day, the last day, when the Lord calls us all home. Thank you, Father Bissonette. I'm so grateful to you for uh, not only your leadership in these difficult days, uh, but also for the kind invitation uh, for me to be the celebrant this day. I can tell you that all of these bishops who are here have known Bishop Paul longer than I have. Uh, but he managed to endear himself to all of us quite quickly. I, I was ordained uh, nine days as a, I was ordained uh, as a bishop nine days before Bishop Paul. And I reminded him of that more than once. <laughs> But because we were ordained so closely, we were the same class at Baby Bishop School in Rome. <laughs> and we met all of these new bishops all at the same time, and it was very hard to remember people's names, and I had never met him before. And so I always remembered that I had met him at the Church of St. Paul outside the walls. So every time to remember his name, I would say St. Paul. I've heard that uttered more than a few times in these last couple days. Huh? But certainly he set the bar so high for us. I'm so grateful to Father uh, Serba for his incredible homily today that I'm sure nourished the whole congregation, but really set the bar high for the bishops who are gathered here. We've heard so much in these last days about shepherds, beautiful pastoral staff, that was Bishop Paul's before us. Beautiful uh, hymn that was sung last evening about uh, the Good Shepherd. Beautiful hymns that were sung today also reminding us of Shepherd. We give thanks to the Lord for Bishop Paul's example in part because of the ways in which he enriched our lives but also because he gave us an insight into the love of Jesus the Good Shepherd. We, as a people of great hope, trust that the Lord will continue to provide uh, for all of us, but most especially for this church of Duluth that was so beloved by Bishop Paul. I'm sure that he's going to be interceding for you, that you get just the right bishop who offers to you some other perspective 
on Christ the Good Shepherd, who was able to continue to build on the great work that Bishop Paul did here. Certainly, um, my, my father would always say that you can judge a father by his family. That made him really nervous. <laughs> But as I come here today and see how beautifully you all pray together, to see the way in which the priests of Duluth really emulate Bishop Paul in their fatherly care, to see the way in which you're able to gather together around the table of the Lord to celebrate the Eucharist, to hear such incredible music, to really be in the presence of such beauty, to see the church represented every possible age from, from infants to those who need some help coming forward, to have not only our deacons and priests, but also so many consecrated women and men, to see all of you lay faithful. You know that it's a church that's healthy. For that, we give thanks to God. We give thanks to God for that great gift that was Bishop Paul to this local church. And we ask that the Lord would continue to show us his love by raising up another bishop, who would be able to serve here with that same shepherd's heart that will always distinguish Bishop Paul Serba, that will always remind us of the love of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Please stand. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother, Bishop Paul. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother, Bishop Paul Serba, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Bishop Paul in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 